Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jay Klein connect here and, of course, head coach Steve Jennings. Coach, a uh, weekend here at the ODI Ice Center. Great crowd both nights. Uh, four, a 4-3 loss on Friday. You get up early, 1-0. Added to some penalty trouble. What was the uh, league-leading best uh, penalty kill allowed two goals. Um, and you guys, you know, a good pushback, but just not quite enough. And again, ends up in a loss, but a, a real competitive game overall. What did you guys as a staff think of Friday's matchup? Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head, right? It was a competitive game. I think the kids were in it the whole way. Penalties in the first period really changed the dynamic of the game for a bit. And we pushed, but just at the end, you know, we had an opportunity to score. We probably missed, I think, when we went back through video, three, three grade A chances where we should have scored, where, you know, we either shot the puck wide, hit the post, that, those sort of things. So, you know, we're, we're getting those chances. We just didn't finish enough of them Friday. Right. When you look back at the penalty kill, and again, a kind of a surprise since the kill has been so strong for them to uh, allow two inside of three minutes roughly. Is there something there that broke down or how, what happened there? I, mean, I think a little bit of a breakdown. I think we were faced with, you know, on three. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you, when you're four on three or five on three, those are, those are very challenging kills to get through because uh, you don't have that fourth person out there, right? So there's a lot more open ice. And I think, you know, we, we certainly learned a bit. Maybe uh, on that first one, we had two guys outside the dot there and they just, just gave up too much ice in the, in the, uh, in the middle. All right, well, we move on to Saturday. And like I said, great crowd both weekends or both uh, both games over the weekend, but Saturday especially. And it was pretty cool to, you know, of course, the partnership with the Aberdeen Wings in my place to see the new warm-up jerseys that they brought out and everything. And uh, again, great crowd Saturday night that was plenty vocal for a 4-2 win yep. for your team defending the Odie. Um, it seemed like, you know, you get up, they answered back right away. You know, then they they get up and and, and Nielsen comes through with a, a big goal to tie things up. And it, again, a real competitive back and forth kind of game. Um, but I think it was really the third the third period that made up the difference. You guys were just stronger in the third. Yeah, I, I really liked the third period we had. I I thought our start was a little bit slow, um, a little sluggish, but we really picked up. And uh, I thought it was great. And the, the third period, pushing through, getting the lead, and then. What I really liked about the third period is once we got the lead, that you know there wasn't a there wasn't a concern about us losing the lead at that point. Yeah. You know, the bench felt different for the first time, where we had a push like that in the third period, and I really felt confident there. I didn't feel like there was a sense of concern or anything. I th think the kids finally showed what we've been asking them to show, right? Where it was right away, like we're going to close this out. We're get we're getting this win. Yeah. Well, uh, that actually transitions nicely into what I was going to go to next because we are a third of the way into the season now. You know, and, and over the last few weeks, uh, different times, we've talked about growth and about uh, getting them to kind of turn a corner. And I, even from a spectator's pr uh, perspective, it felt different to me Thurs on, on, in the third period there on Saturday night. It just felt like they were play, uh, you know, skating with the energy with plenty of jam and stuff. And it just, it, it wasn't like a kind of shaky, questionable, like, hold your breath kind of moment, right. you know, it, and it really, it really did feel like a, a corner had been turned. You guys as a staff feel like um, you're at a point now where you're starting to see some identity and some growth that you've been, that you've been looking for. Yeah, I think we've, we've been seeing it consistently week to week, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we, we maybe see it a little bit more because we're on the ice with them, you know, during the week for practice. So we see some of the application of what we're trying to teach that translates into games and where we've seen it in spurts, we saw it more consistently this weekend, which yeah. is really good. And that's something you've been, you know, a goal that has been, you've been trying to achieve. So that's awesome. Now the, the key is to, uh, to keep it going and yeah. not let it kind of backtrack, huh? How do you yeah. go about that? Uh, you know, I, I think, Boy, if, if any of us had the, yeah. had the recipe for that, we'd be coaching at different places, right? But I, I think for these guys, it's really about how we talk to them, how we get them to see the progress they're making. Sometimes, I was talking to one of the players last week, I said, you know, you're stuck in the middle of the forest, all you see is trees. Right. But we're telling you, you're in a forest, right? So, so for some of, some of what we have to do is get them to be able to see the progress they're making, because it's really hard while you're in a in a transition and in a change to see the change that's happening because you're not far enough down the path, right? right. So, so for us, it's highlighting those things, still showing the things we want to continue to improve on and encouraging that behavior, right? Like that's, that's the other part. Like, you know, 
in the old days, like when I was a kid, it was you, you went out, you got sort of negative push, right? And, uh, and don't ever do that again. And in this generation, it's more on the positive side. Like, hey, you're doing this really well. Let's keep doing that, right? So, right. all about building. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about goaltending. Um, you know, you've been going back and forth, it seems like, really, between Dom and Greg. And, you know, they've got, each of them have had games where they're really having great moments. And then a few moments where maybe they want one back. Uh, how, how do you, as a, again, as a staff or as a coach, determine who it's going to be each night? Is there something about a feeling or, or maybe a conversation that you have with them where they feel like, okay, this, this is my night? Um, and also, I, I guess, if I can transition that a little bit into, in, into the, the difficulty that, that goaltending can be, because it, and I'm, we're going to have a goalie on here, so that's yeah, why, I'm, yeah. why we're going down this road. But, you know, it, it is, they are by themselves, and it can be a real mental game for, for goaltending, uh, goaltenders versus, uh, versus a skate-out player. So um, can you talk a little bit about the goaltending and, and the, sure. the ups and downs and, and, yeah. and uh, moments that we've had? Well, let's, let's break it down, right? Hockey at its simplest form is a game of mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So the purpose for us is to force the other guys to make more mistakes than we do and to capitalize it when they do, right? right. And sure. And the, the challenge with, with being a goalie is you're the ultimate point of success or failure, mm -hmm. right? Good, bad, or indifferent, that's, that's where it comes down to. Um, so how we make those decisions, right? So we work with Josh Acock, so he's not always here in town, but he's with us in town all the time. So we talk to him during the week. He sends drills for the guys to do. They're consistently working off a plan that he sends us. Um, We'll also turn around and look at the week of practice they have, right? Sure. So uh, I think like anyone, it's hard to have a great week of practice and then not play. And it's really hard as a coach to put somebody in who's had a terrible week of practice, right? Yeah. So so the challenge with the goalies, we have compete games every day at practice. And we want to see who's winning more of those battles and those games because that shows your willingness to win in a game. And that's really what we're trying to get is that practice like a game. And then a game is not a big step forward, right? Sure. So. So, you know, for us, it's, it, it's kind of the hodgepodge of that whole thing. And, and, and it is a challenge. And, you know, a third of the way in, you know, frankly, I'd love it to be that one of them really stands up and says, this crease is mine and I'll share it with you later. And I think it, we're, we're still waiting for that to happen, to yeah. be honest. Well, and, and again, that kind of is part of the reason we're going to crawl into the mind of a goaltender just a little bit. Good here. luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, oftentimes there is a, a 1A, 1B kind of, kind of uh, situation or 1 and 2. You know, it, it depends on, on any given team, really. Right. So, All right, Coach. Well, uh, Austin Bruins right now, top of the Central Division with 29 points, North Iowa with 28, Minot with 27, the Wings with 23, St. Cloud with 18, and Bismarck with 15. Um, you know, we have talked about on several occasions about the the parody and how this uh, this this division is really tight and I found it interesting I actually talked with Houston Cartman a little bit uh, on Saturday night and he even he said that he goes everybody that he talks to around the the you know the league they're all saying the central division is is you know looks like it's it is going to be a really tough and the, you know a tough division to play in and to win in um, but it is so even so and I thought that was you know telling over the weekend you've got St. Cloud sweeping Bismarck or swept by Bismarck, sorry, and then Austin sweeping North Iowa, so they flip-flop spots in the standings. Wings and Minot split, you know, of course. Uh, so, again, it just demonstrates that parity. You, of course, have Austin coming up uh, on the road. This is a team that you've seen here at home. Um, what, have you, what can you tell us about the Bruins? You know, I... Um... <sighs> We talked to before when they were, they were coming in, right? A team with good physical size. They have mm -hmm. the ability to play hard. They actually have a penalty kill that's as good and, you know, statistically right now better than ours. Um, you know, their power play is, is producing. So they, they have... They have a lot of veteran players there. Mm -hmm. They're a mature team, so and and they compete, yeah, right, well coached, and they compete. So it's going to be it'll be a fun weekend. It's going to be a hard weekend. And again, I think the steps we're taking put us in a good position to go down there and have a good weekend. What um, as a team? What are you looking for out of your guys? What do they need to do? Yeah, I think we need to have that consistency that we are really mm -hmm. starting to see. It's starting to apply, right? I'm not again. I think I talked about this last week, right? I'm not going home and excuse me, complaining about 
or just articulating that we're just not competing the right way, right? Like right. I don't, in my, when I go back through and I look at my notes post game, I'm not writing that sort of stuff anymore, right? Doesn't mean that there aren't little pockets here and there, but we're just not disappearing for half a period, yeah. which I think with a young team we were doing in the, the start of the year, a little too much. And that's the frustration that we've had, that's the growth we've had, and that's the response we're starting to see from the kids, which is great, right? Absolutely. And that's what, that's what it's really all about. So I think, I think for these guys this weekend, it, it's really gonna be about us playing to our potential the whole time, because when we do that, we're really hard to play with, right? And that's what, that's what everyone goes. And you know, back to your comment on the division, I mean, I was talking to a couple of coaches from outside our division in the league, and they were like, what's going on? Like the, your division, just everyone's beating everyone, and it's mm -hmm. not, it's not, you know, no one's really getting walked out of buildings, yep. and, and everyone's in the fight every night, which is great. That's what you want. That's really good hockey, but it's frustrating, right? Especially, like, you know, when, when you want to get on a roll and you want to get a multi-game win streak going, like, it's That's a challenge. A lot more difficult, for Correct. sure. Correct. Uh, yeah, to that point, I thought it was interesting to hear a player from another team saying the same thing. I was like, wow, I guess, you know, they're... That is something that everybody kind of else, everybody else sees too. So, yeah. all right. Well, coach, uh, that's about all I've got for you. I appreciate you taking some time to talk with us on Wings Weekly, and uh, best of luck against the Bruins coming up all this right. weekend. Thanks, Jay. All right, folks, we'll return with the second portion of Wings Weekly coming up after this. We raise the bar on bar food with sandwiches, tenders, and. Okay. There's more where this <laughs> came from. To the greatest of all times. Wings Weekly continues on, and as usual, a player is joining me, and this time it is Gurgly Oros. Go, goes by Greg, of course. Greg uh, from Giora, Hungary. Am I saying that right? Correct, yeah. Hey, That's all great. right. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on. We are uh, excited to, to learn a little about you and let the Wings fans find out a little more about uh, about your family, your you know your your want, likes and dislikes and all those kinds of stuff. Plus, we're going to talk hockey, of course, here too. Um, let's start with that, though. How did you get started in hockey, and at what point did you decide this goaltending thing, that's what I want to do? First of all, thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, when I started skating, I was six years old. I was just going for, like, a little skate, and then a coach in my hometown just recognized me, and then he was asking me if I wanted to play hockey or try out for a team. So I said, yeah, why not? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't playing any other sports at that time. And that was... Uh, I was a player for two years, and after that, I just decided I'm going to try out goalie for like a Christmas skate, and it was a lot of fun, so yeah. I just stayed in the net and never came out. You know, it's funny, and whenever I talk to goaltenders, I always have to bring up the fact how much work it is. Like, I know when I was coaching, uh, you know, in the uh, developmental group for the Cougars and so on, a lot of times it felt like some of the kids wanted to be goalie because they thought it'd be easy. They could, yeah. just, they could just stand there. They don't have to skate and work that hard. But the up, down, up, down, and all that kind of stuff, it, it ends up being a lot more work in some cases. So um, there's, there, that, would I would say, would be one of the more difficult things. What would you say um, is the most difficult component of being a goaltender? Probably I would say the mental part. Yeah. Because uh, when a goalie makes mistakes, uh, or a goalie makes mistakes, it's uh, already on the scoreboard. So I would say that's, that's the hardest part of being a goalie. But also the gear is pretty heavy, yep. so movements are a lot harder than for players. And you gotta go, as you said, up, down, and slide right to left. You're in the net for the whole 60 minutes of a game, so that's also pretty hard, I think. So both physical and mental. Yes. And the mental part I'm gonna go into a little further here in just a little bit, because I do think it's interesting The goaltenders are kinda on an island. You know, you're kinda by yourself, yeah. and, and uh, it takes a different kind of person to, to be able to um, handle that, I guess, maybe. Um, tell us a little bit about your family. Of course, uh, being from Hungary, it can't be easy to be over in the United States. Had you done any traveling before uh, before you come, came over here to the Wings? Yeah, I was in Canada for two years. Okay. I went to school there and I played hockey there. So that gave me a little help before coming here because I kind of know how the things work in North America. It's a lot different than Europe. So, but yeah, in my family, no one played hockey before. I have one sister, she's 14. Um, so yeah, that's I, I. No one played hockey before, and uh, yeah. Yeah, you got to, that that one coach that saw you out skating got you going, huh? Yeah. Oftentimes it seems like there is a, somebody in the family that has has had some experience, but not uh, not always the case. I have to ask you. Um, last year, last two years, there was a Hungarian here on this team by the name of Nathan Vertez. Do you know Nathan? Yeah, I know him pretty well. Uh, when I started talking to Aberdeen, I asked him about 
some stuff, like tell me something about the town or the team, coaches, and then he told me a lot of nice things. So I was pretty excited to come here when I signed, and he just helped me a lot. I was going to say, I would imagine that he would have all kinds of uh, you know advice and let, to let you know um, about the the team itself, the community, and so on. I have to laugh and think back to. Um, um, a road trip. I can't remember exactly where we were even, but uh, the coach at the time, Scott Langer, asked Nathan about you, and Nathan says, "So what? I'm a scout now too." <laughs> <laughs> and I was struck with struck with me or struck struck me as funny, but uh, uh, I would again imagine that that advice. Do you still talk with him? Is he? Is, does yeah, he, I talked yeah? him a couple times. Yeah. Nice. Uh, he, he was always a, a fan favorite uh, here at the the ODI Center, and uh, definitely a, a kind of flamboyant guy when he'd score and stuff. So that uh, created a lot of a lot of fans. What surprised you most? Most now, you said you you, can't, you spent some time in Canada, so that's going to be you know pretty similar, as, uh, you know, obviously North America. But what surprised you most about the United States? What is there anything that kind of stood out that you went like, what you know, what is this? To be honest, not really, because in Canada I was in a little small town. Yeah. It was even smaller than here in Aberdeen. So, I don't know, I feel like the fast food restaurants are a lot better here than in Canada. Really? That's that's one thing that really stood out. But besides that, it's kind of the same. Yeah. What do you miss most about, about home? Is there any, like, certain foods or anything like that uh, that you're like, oh, I... Hey, yeah, I definitely miss my family a lot. Oh, sure. And my dog. My oh, cat. yeah. So, yeah, but food, yeah, I miss food, but there are some pretty good foods here, too, so... Yeah. It's not that bad, I think. I would laugh at Nathan how he would talk about the sugars here versus in, in Hungary and how everything was so sweet and so yeah, good, tasty. That's that, true. That always made me laugh. All right. Uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, about the difficulties of being a goaltender, both physically and mentally. Uh, and you mentioned that it is. You know, you have the weight of the, the world on your or the weight of the team for sure, maybe not the world, but mm -hmm. on your shoulders. How do you, like after you let a, let a goal in, it's going to happen. You know, like Coach yeah. always says, it's hockey. People, you know, you're going to have, you know, you're going to score some and they're going to score some. That's the way it goes. But when you let one in that maybe you feel like, dang it, I, I just, I ha was so close to that. Or, I, you know, it, can it become a, a bit of a, um, a block, a mental block, or how do you, you know, because it seems like what it, it would be important to, to get it behind you and move on to the next play, but that's not always the easiest thing to do. You know, yeah. I know a lot of people with, whether it be anxiety or, or, you know, whatever it might be, they, they're, it's really hard sometimes to go, okay, that's behind me. I've got to focus on the next one. Is there something that you do as a player that, that can help you with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely it's not easy to let in goals, especially when it's a bad goal. Mm -hmm. Like, it kind of stays in your mind. But what I'm trying to do is just, like, take a sip of water, think about it, and then when they drop the puck, I just completely forget about it and focus on the next shot. Sure. And just make sure I'm going to stop the next shot and go ahead. I would feel like there should be, like, some sort of trick or something that you could do to yourself, to, you know, but but maybe not, you know, because, like I said, that's uh, certainly not the most easy thing is to, is to, to blow it off, so to speak. Um, Someone told me that um, way back in like the end of August, you ha you had on Instagram you had your mask painted and yeah. you were showing showing your mask, and uh, I was like, man, you must be pretty excited to come come be an Aberdeen Wing if you're getting it, getting it uh, all painted up and everything already. That was really cool. So what was um, walk me through the process of becoming an Aberdeen Wing? Were were you jumping at the bit to get here and play, or or was that a, maybe a little bit of hesitancy? Uh, I started talking to the team in December, and then I finally signed in, uh, signed in June, and uh, I was really excited to come here. So, yeah, as you were talking about my mask, that's my third mask that I did, or uh, like the paint job, so I think it turned out pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah, I was I was just really Wait a excited. Minute. You said that you did? You I mean, painted I, it yourself? I, no, I kind of oh. design it. I draw it down in a paper. Okay, okay. And then I just give it to the painter and sure. he does it for me. I was gonna say that's but impressive. Yeah. But I, I definitely put in some hours of like thinking, thinking about what should I put here and there. Sure. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool and I'm just excited to be here. Excellent. Well, we're certainly happy to have you. Um, last week, Thanksgiving, uh, not a not a thing in Europe. What what was your uh, impressions of the the Thanksgiving spread and the meal? Where you're like, wow, this is uh, this is pretty impressive. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Definitely a lot of food. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it a lot. We couldn't eat that much because we had a game next sure. day, but but it was nice. Yeah, that. Uh 
definitely the, the, the food part of Thanksgiving is something everyone always looks, to, looks forward to, for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, we've got Austin coming up. Um, by the way, congratulations on the, on the, on the win there on Saturday night. That had to feel pretty good. You've got Austin coming up. What is your uh, must-have when it comes to a road trip? Are there some, some things that you have to take with you? Whether it's a pillow uh, or whatever. Yeah, I always take my pillow because I can't sleep in the hotel without my pillow. Just a lot more comfortable mm -hmm. than what we get there. And I also take my headphones on the road, listen to some music, gets me sleep better. Uh, but besides that, nothing with my pajamas. Yeah, and yeah that's it. Okay. Well, what... Um what do you think, you know, Austin, of course, the top of the Central Division, I was just talking with Coach Jennings about uh, how the level of parity and how even the Central Division is. Uh, anybody can beat anybody on any given night, it seems like. What do you guys have to do as a team to come away with a couple of wins from Austin? Yeah, I think we definitely have to carry the good things from the past weekend, mm -hmm. work, hard, work hard this week, and then just play our game, do the things that the coaches ask, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get the sweep this weekend. Yeah, all about preparation sometimes, huh? All right, uh, I've got a question for you here. I would not expect to see somebody from Europe wearing a Bass Pro Shops hat. Where does this come from? I don't know. I think it's kind of a cool thing here. And then I got this hat last summer because I was at my buddy's house. We went to Bass Pro Shops, and then I just picked it up. And Excellent. Okay, yeah. I thought maybe there was a little something more behind that. Where no, it's like there's but a, I think it looks cool. You know, it's, oh, it's a sharp hat for sure. Yeah. I just thought maybe there was a little backstory there. All right. Well, Greg, I, I appreciate you coming on the show here. Um, I won't keep you much longer. I know you got a lot, of, a lot, a lot to do here throughout the week here. So, again, appreciate you coming on and letting Wings, Wings fans, and uh, get a little, little bit of a look uh, at you, I guess. So, thanks for having me. You bet. Well, your Wings kick off December on the road against the Austin Bruins on Friday and Saturday, December third and fourth. The puck drops at 7 p.m. both nights inside Riverside Arena. You can watch the games using your hockey TV login or live at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Aberdeen, the official home of all Wings games, away games. Listen to the games on Hub City Radio 94.1 The Rock or on the Rock app on your mobile device. The Wings will return to the OD on Friday and Saturday, December 10th and 11th to host the Minot Minotauros once again. Stay tuned for more details regarding our specialty jersey auction happening on December 11th. Season tickets and corporate night sponsorships are available for the 2021-2022 season. Call Aaron at 605-380-5852 for more information. Don't forget Wings Weekly is now a podcast. Find the audio for this season's episodes on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Once again, Greg Oros, thanks again so much for coming on Wings Weekly. Thank you. All right, folks, that'll wrap up this week's Wings Weekly. 